So, today, I've got a bunch of tidying up to do, and I wanted to talk to you while I'm doing so, and maybe we might go off track, but I just wanted to have a quick discussion about technology in, uh, in woodworking, because there's a couple of things coming up that uh, I think are interesting, and I just wanted to talk to you about it for a moment. So, stick with me, let's have a chat. So technology has always been a funny thing in woodworking. It's always been available. And whether you were using a hand drill and a brace to uh, drill holes before you kind of went up to something like this, um, Stanley Continental. That, that was a technological breakthrough because other things were happening compared to what people were used to at that any given time. This obviously then progressed much further. And we went into things like electric drills. And this was a technology that didn't take away from the part of making. But what it did do is it made making a little bit more accessible, a little bit easier and allowed you to do things quicker, which then meant you could produce more. And in a, in a, in a world that's, that's driven by currency, that is quite often one of those things you need to be aware of. Technology is cyclical as well in a lot of ways because, you know, we used to have things like your, 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 your power drills that were 12 and 14.4 volts and 10 volts and things like that. And then we went up to the power wars when we were having, it started with the 18 volts and it went to 20 and then 36 and so on and so forth. And now one of my favourite drills is the, uh, is the little 12 volt from JCB, which... I think is a fantastic and very, very capable drill because the technology has moved on enough to allow it to be able to do more than some of the much bigger drills had, the, the older drills and bigger stuff that I've had from uh, years gone by. Even things like routers. Now, granted, this is a 3D printed version, uh, but this kind of style of router or block router or whatever has been available for years made out of wood. And 3D printing has just meant that when I couldn't afford to buy one, like a Veritas or whatever else, then I could afford to make one because it cost pennies. Now, there's some kind of sort of weirdness when it comes to looking at technology to replicate old fashioned stuff. But, you know, it's one of those things that we do. But also, you know, we had the original writers and, and then they were superseded by electric writers. And they you can't deny that an electric writer makes life much easier than doing everything by hand like you would have done in the old days. So what made me talk about this kind of subject today? Well, what made me sort of think about it for a moment was the fact that yesterday I just threw a router plate into my multifunction work table thing that I'm building. Um, and part of that is that I 3D printed this air duct that's going to sit in the router fence that I'm going to make to go on top of here. But I 3D printed this and I can build my fence around it to make sure that everything works out properly now if i'd have had to go out and buy one i didn't know what i don't know what size i would have needed i don't know anything about kind of what's necessary i barely know anything about woodworking so um when it comes to this i wanted to 3d print this it took a few hours to print but it's perfectly fine i can incorporate this into my fence that I'll build and then if I want to make it bigger or smaller or more holes or less holes or bigger holes or smaller holes, I can do any of that and I haven't got to go out to the shops again I haven't got to spend 50 60 quid every time I want to change something and I can just try stuff out that'll work for me and it's quick and doesn't cost anything well comparatively doesn't cost anything so, big whoops, I hear you say. So you're printing a couple of 3D things out. That still doesn't really explain why you're talking about technology. Well, let me just take you into the uh, my office or my studio, and then uh, I can talk to you some more. We'll, we'll come back out, though. Ready? And here we are. This is my uh, small little studio. I do a lot of photography in here. I do all manner of bits and bobs and going on in here when I can. But uh, what I want to show you is on the other side of you right there. So let me just turn the camera around. And here's one section that we're going to be looking at. This is an Xtool F1. Now, before you draw turn, turn away, go, oh, he's doing lasers, everyone and their uncle's doing lasers. Yes, 
Everyone and the uncle is doing lasers. I turned down the big one in order to get this small one because it's great for those of you that do um, uh, craft shows and all that sort of stuff or just want to be able to personalise things for Etsy stores or whatever um, in order to um, you know make your, your offering that little bit extra. Now, it's not cheap, but when we're looking at cheap, something else that I'm going to be looking at Apologies for the super harsh lighting here. Like anything, I didn't think about this and sort out diffusers and stuff before I sat down. But um, my point being, this is my Elegoo Neptune 3 printer. I bought this second hand for £100. I'm going to be making a video on this as well and showing you how 3D printers can be really useful in a workshop. And I might do a sort of a couple of follow up videos as well, showing how um, like every month my favourite 3D prints for the workshop or something like that. Because once you've got one of these, literally the world is your oyster. But uh, yeah, anyway, technology. While being inside has been nice, we'd now better go back outside so I can just talk you through a couple more points that I want to make before you go on your merry way. Let me get back to the workshop. Okay, so I guess that what I'm trying to say is even when it comes to lighting, having something that you can do at the touch of a button makes our lives easier rather than takes over the process of woodworking. So what I'm hoping to do is I'm going to talk you through 3D printing because I think that that will be super interesting, whether you're making stuff like this or hose adapters or, or um, I don't know, nuts and bolts or vices. You can make all sorts. Um, I'm going to tell you more about that when I do that video. And also when it comes to engraving and engra engraving machines and all that sort of stuff, how they can be useful for you as well. And also giving you an understanding of the technology behind it because just like graduating from this to an electric drill it doesn't take the 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 woodwork out of it what it does though is it just helps you make stuff a little bit quicker and that is something that i'm excited to tell you more about so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. But also, if you've got any questions or if there's anything that you want to discuss when it comes to the items that I've shown you today, um, have you got any 3D printing questions? Have you got any engraving laser questions? Anything like that? Um, I, let me know down below. And also, I'm not going to be getting a big old CNC, so don't worry about that. I haven't got the time, space, energy or strength to be able to deal with one of those bad boys. So... I think we've we've maxed out on the technology. We might get some better versions of what we've currently got, but uh, yeah, we're not we're not going all crazy CNC world like so many woodworking YouTubers. But um, stick with me. I hope you learned something on this journey. It's all part of the journey, which is all part of the channel. Thanks very much, and I'll see you very very soon. Bye bye.